everyone, my name is Lillian. I am a current high school explainer at the Exploratorium, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys the cow eyeball dissection. So, what you need, of course, a cow eyeball. Um, I also like to have a second one here in a plastic bag so that the visitors can touch it while I'm doing my own dissection. Um, also, a couple pairs of scissors because sometimes they're not super good, so always want to have a backup pair, a scalpel, and then a tray to set all of your supplies on. So, um, yeah. so right here we have our cow eye. And you may be wondering, why do we do cow eye dissections here at the Exploratorium? That's a great question. Um, I definitely like asking visitors that, just to kind of get their heads in the right space. And while I'm asking these questions, I already start to cut off the fat and the muscle. So the fat is this lighter pink stuff right here, kind of surrounding the eye. And then the muscle is this darker pink right here. So I'm going to start cutting while I'm talking. Um, so as you start cutting, you can listen to people's answers on why they think we might do dissections here. And then you're going to um, explain the purposes of the two. So the fat protects the eye, keeps everything in place, and then the muscle allows the eye to move. So cow eyes can look up, down, left, and right, and they can also actually retract their eye just slightly so that when they're grazing in the grass, um, they're not going to poke their eyes out. So. Um, yeah, and that's different from humans. So humans can also look up, down, left, and right, but we can also look clockwise and counterclockwise. What we're going to talk about is called the sclera. So the sclera is the white part of the eye. As we can see now, it's kind of discolored, so it's a brown color. Um, and the sclera has very little nerve endings. Cows do not really have too much of a purpose for the sclera. Humans like to use their eyes to show emotions or convey how they're feeling. You can see where someone's looking. If they're sad, happy, upset, cows are not really showing emotions very much. They don't really need their sclera for that purpose. And this part right here in the middle is called the cornea. The cornea is super, super important. The cornea does about two thirds of all the focusing of light coming into the eye, and it's really thick as well. So with our scalpel, you can kind of hold it up and see here, a cow's cornea is about as thick as the handle, whereas our cornea, human's cornea, is about as thick as the blade. So you can see a visual difference right there. And then what I'm going to do now is cut into the cornea, grab the eye, and just apply pressure, and cut right through the cornea. See it? This is called the aqueous humor, and what this does is provides nutrients to the eye, makes sure everything is working smoothly, and it also helps with the pressure in the eye. So we can see ever since I've cut into the cornea, it's not as like inflated as it used to be because all the pressure is kind of gone now. So it would look like this, but since we've cut into it, it's kind of deflated now. And like I said, just make sure everything is running smoothly. And it's kind of discolored at this point. It's kind of brown, black. Um, typically it's clear, but it's turning this color because the iris ring, which we'll get to next, is starting to disintegrate. So the color is seeping through from there. So after this cut, what I'm going to do is cover it with my glove. And now we're going to cut around the eye to open it up. See the iris ring is starting to come off. So I put back down. And I like to put this on the back of my glove. Now the iris ring um, is a muscle that expands or contracts to let in more or less light depending on your environment. So that's that. And that's also where your pupil is found. So your pupil is the hole uh, in the middle of your iris ring. Uh, the iris ring is also where your eye color is found. So humans have a variety of eye colors, but cows actually only have brown eyes depending on the concentration of melanin. The vitreous body does is provides body to the eye. If we were to set it kind of back together without the vitreous body inside, we can see it's completely deflated now, so it just helps with the shape. And then inside right here we have the lens, and surrounding the lens is the ciliary muscle. So I said earlier that the cornea does two-thirds of all the focusing of light. Uh, these two in tandem do the remaining one-third. So what I like to do now is slowly peel away the body from the lens in the middle. It's going to be really delicate because the lens is fragile. Peel it all away. So I've peeled away the lens from the body, so we're just going to be holding the lens now. And I kind of like to grab four fingers and kind of prop it up like this. And if you have an audience, you can even kind of like hold it up to them. And you're like, all right, why don't you guys look through and tell me what you can see? And what they should say is they'll see you upside down and backwards. And that's because everything that we see is actually upside down and backwards, but our brain flips the image uh, for us and gives it in the right orientation. So, yes. And then after you show them that, whoopsies, uh, what you want to do is set the lens down and pop it. And this is going to show about the layers. So we just popped it and we're just going to start kind of peeling all the layers away. 
And what we're getting to now is called the core lens. And the core lens is what cows and humans are born with. And every year that we're alive, another layer is added and added and added to improve your vision. It's definitely not as um, almost marbly looking anymore. It's definitely not like that. It's kind of mushy now. It's not as clear. If you tried to look through it, you probably couldn't see anything. And it's definitely a different consistency. It feels kind of waxy. So you can say that's the core lens. talking about is the retina which is this right here it contains two different types of cells cone cells which help us see color and rod cells which help us see light and movement so the retina is all connected at one point right there that is called your blind spot so at the demo station there should be a paddle um, on the side in the drawer and you can hold it out and explain your blind spot now moving on to the back part of the eye this part right here the really pretty shiny iridescent layer that is called the tapetum and I like to think of this as kind of like a mirror inside of the eye, giving nocturnal animals or semi-nocturnal animals a better chance to see at nighttime because the light comes in like this and will kind of reflect within the eye, making everything brighter. And humans do not have this because we should be asleep when it's dark outside. And we can see that the tapetum does not cover the full surface area of the back. You can see there's kind of some black parts here and right there. And that's because cows are not fully nocturnal. A uh, cool fact you can say for like little kids or even adults, you can ask them if they have any cats or dogs. And if they've ever seen their eyes glowing, you can say their eyes are glowing because they have a tapetum in the back. Um, and for people, sometimes you'll take a picture maybe with a flash and you see that there's red in their eyes. That's because there are blood vessels in the back of our eye and that's where the red is coming from. It's not coming from a tapetum or something like a tapetum. eye the optic nerve right here uh, that's what we avoided cutting off when we were cutting off all of the fat and muscle so make sure it's still intact so what do our eyes help us do do they help us taste do they help us smell no they help us see but what good would all that information be if it doesn't go to your brain because with the information we're given from our eyes we decide what we say what we wear and so on so super super important so this optic nerve is kind of like the cable connecting the eye and the brain together and what I'm going to do now is squeeze on the optic nerve and we're going to see something come out right there. So this is called myelin sheath and I like to put it on the back of my glove like this. And myelin sheath is kind of like the insulator. So if we were to think of this like a cable, this is like the insulator for the cable. So the more of this you have, hypothetically, the faster you would process things. And the optic nerve has 1.3 to 1.7 million nerve endings, so a ton of nerve endings. All right, and when you're done with your dissection, I like to ask visitors if they had any questions. Um, you can thank the crowd for coming and watching. Um, sometimes people will come up and get a uh, better look at the parts that you have here, or they want to touch it in the bag. So that pretty much concludes the dissection. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>